everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Couture. And Couture is um, a, a new size for my albums, so I'm going to uh, go over. It's pretty much the same methodology I use for all my builds, but of course it's different dimensions. So the pocket pages are going to, you're going to start with 8.5 by 11. 8.5 by 11. You're going to score a half inch on the 8.5 inch side. You're going to do that a total of eight times to make four pocket pages. I'm only going to do it with you once. Um, and for the Couture album, there'll be four pocket pages. So you'll need eight of these. Okay, so you're going to take uh, both your pieces, you're going to fold this over, and we're going to join these so that you have a flange on one side and a flange on the other. And <clears throat> what I like to do is just remove a little bit of the tape, fold it over, and then I can lay it down on this corner, and I'm only just a small amount of tape. And then I can pivot this left and right until I get it lined up the way that I want. The other thing I like to do is I use this as our, my tape tear tool, which we sell in our store. But anything that's about has about an eighth of an inch lip on it that is uh, has a very strong right angle. So I, I don't want to use my chipboard. I want to use something that's got a very sharp right angle. And I push both papers into this uh, to get it to line up. And then, that looks good, I'm going to pull the tape out. Okay, now on the other side, I don't, I don't need to do that because we've already got it in on one side. So the other side, we're just going to remove the tape and make sure that this is as flat as possible because we want to try to minimize the amount of bow that we have. It's going to have some anyway. So same procedure, I take a little, maybe an inch, Pull the tab, fold it back, and then lay my hand across the paper and pull on it like a zipper. There we go. So you're going to do that three more times so that you have a total of four pocket pages. Okay. So the next thing that you're going to need is, um, or the next thing we're going to work on together is the hinge system that's going to hold those pocket pages in into the book. Okay, and I've made so many of these, it's all memorized, but you're going to start at, I like to start in the middle and work out. <clears throat> and when you do that, basically two and three quarters becomes your first score line, two and three quarters. Then every half inch after that, you're going to create a score line. And I find that half inch is enough of a gusset and it's also enough of a peak to hold the pocket page. And you're gonna score every half inch until we get to eight and a quarter. So you're gonna start, oops, I, I'm off an eighth of an inch. You're gonna start at two and three quarters, score a half inch until you get to eight and a quarter, and that's your last score line. Now, as we fold this together, we're going to create peaks and valleys. So this is going to become the flange that goes on the inside of the front cover. This will be the flange that goes on the inside of the back cover. Now the first, so that's folding up. The next one, we're going to fold these two together. And this is going to create the hinge. So this is what your page is going to lay on. So the next one we're going to skip and then we're going to pinch these two together to make another peak. Skip one, then pinch two. Okay, 
Okay, and again, you're gonna wind up with this half inch gusset in here. So we're gonna do that two more times. Now I like to bring it to the edge of my scoreboard and bend it uh, right over the scoreboard and then I get a nice crisp line. But I know when I do that, I'm off camera sometimes. Okay, there we go. And here's our last one. Okay, so we're, we pretty much have everything uh, scored and folded. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna apply adhesive to those valleys, okay? So that's gonna be tape in my case. Um, you can use glue, I, I prefer tape here. Um, I, as a rule of thumb, if it's an interactive element, meaning it has motion of any type, I put tape on it. If it's static, like a photo mat, I use glue. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. Now I've already pre-made one for my album, so I'm just gonna go through and add tape to this one section. Then I'm gonna show you the finished one. <clears throat> just to sort of move things along. <clears throat> okay, now across the bottom, um, if I haven't already, uh, I, there will be a banner that shows, you know, every single score line where to score. Again, you start at two and three quarters, score a half inch until you get to eight and a quarter, but I'll give you every incremental uh, score line in the banner. So you're gonna do that process th uh, three more times. And once you're done with that, you're going to have what looks like this. So here's my four peaks. So once you've got those ironed out, you're gonna add tape to the front and back. I'm using 3 8 inch tape on these half inch hinges. Okay, then we wanna burnish this all down. So we're gonna slip our pocket pages over this and then we're gonna reach in with a hook tool. With this hook tool and pull the tape out as we install the pages. That's why you wanna make sure you burnish your tape down really well so that when you go to reach in and pull the backing off, you don't bring the tape with it. Okay, so all of those have been taped together. We've got tape on the front. I like to split it down the middle and then the, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is check the measurement. So I'm gonna see what the width is. So this is seven and one eight. And then flip it over and this is just shy of seven and one eight, it's seven and one sixteenth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tug slightly on the bottom and make it seven and one eight. So now I know that if I put this in square, both sides should look square. Um, because I've got the same measurement here as here. It can be off as much as uh, an eighth of an inch. I don't know why that happens, but it does occasionally. So just be aware of that and it'll help you get this into your book centered. And that's the key to making sure your pages are all centered. Okay, so now we're gonna go over the cover and I'm gonna show you the technique um, I used with uh, my creative spirits um, Signature tape, but I'm not going to show you how I put it on the whole book. Um, it's really time-consuming, and I've already done it. 
Um, it was something I did offline. I'm still getting used to using the tape, so I, I still struggle with it a little bit, fumbling. It makes for a really nice, clean look, but I, I'm still working on my technique. Okay, <clears throat> so let me get the tape out and show you what it is. Okay, so this is the signature black construction tape, which we sell now in our shop, and it comes over from UK. Um, so basically what you're gonna do is, let me tell you the size of these panels. They are, this is 11, 11 and a quarter by, by eight and a quarter. 11 and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So in this case, what I did is I took this tape and I put a band all the way around three sides <clears throat> of this large piece and this large piece. So you're gonna go around three sides. The spine side is gonna remain without tape. So go around three sides. Now the tape is strong. It's a, it's a weird combination of being strong, but it also tears very easily um, if you get it at an angle. And I can't find my starting point for heaven's sakes. Um, there it is. <laughs> it was hard to see. And I'll demonstrate that for you right now. So basically, I would take the tape, find the center line of the tape, put it, put it down, and then you're gonna wind up pinching it around. Now in this series, I'm going to link a video where Claire Chevelle goes over this in detail so you know how to use the tape. If you don't know how to use the tape, then it's the same construction method that I've used for all my books, which is, I wrap it with cardstock. So you could look at any one of my um, album covers or album base album builds and, and figure out how to do this. I would put multiple sheets of cardstock together and then lay it each piece in individually and then wrap it. But I'm trying this new tape, so there we go. But if you have more questions, let me know and I'll do what I can to help you out. So now when it comes to the side, the way you get um, these two pieces joined, I'm gonna actually show you this, with some scrap chipboard. Okay. So imagine this is the cover and this is the hinge and then or, uh, the spine. And in the end, I want it to look like this and I would have another cover over here. So you put these two pieces down flush. You're gonna take your tape. Lay it down. over these two pieces. You're gonna cut a little nick out of here, just so you don't have a lot of corner buildup. And I'll stick that down so you can get a look at it. So it's just a little triangle. And that's gonna go down. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. It's a little challenging with the book that I'm working on because it's a big book. Um, you could do it, but it's a little, it's a lot to hold. And that's partly why I didn't do it on camera. I wound up using my lap as my third arm. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna go down. And then you're gonna leave those two tabs up. There's your hinge. I'm gonna flatten that down. Cut another notch. And I'm only doing one side, but you need to do both. So you're gonna notch both sides. Now they're gonna come around this side and you're gonna flatten it. And again, I can't recommend enough to see Claire Chevelle's 
video on this because she's done it so many times. Now when you're scoring, because like I said, it is strong, but it can tear easily, make sure you're using a score tool that is not sharp. I didn't do a very good job. Burnish everything down. Most of the time as you're burnishing, you can burnish the wrinkles out. And remember, all of this is gonna, all we're trying to do is get enough black that we can add this on uh, without, you know, having to use a bunch of cardstock. So when we put our designer paper down, we've got our nice black border, okay? So we had a bare strip here, and this was bare. So the first thing I do is join this, join this, and then once I wrap it around and burnish everything in place, and you can see where I've wrapped it around, then you're gonna to wanna to come across the top and cover that last little piece of chipboard that's exposed, okay? So there you go, so that's that. So now if I added another side here, you'd see that we still have a bare piece of chipboard. We gotta go around that, that, and these sides, okay? So start by wrapping three of the four sides on the front and back, join, the front spine and back with this technique. And then lastly, come back around on the spine and cover it. And that's that's it. And again, there is there is a excellent tutorial. It'll be in the playlist from Claire Chevelle. And people that have been using this rave about it. And um, I really like the finished look. I'm just having a little trouble with my technique, but I really like the way it looks. And it's really nice not to have to piece together a bunch of um, cardstock when I'm doing an album of this size. 11 inches is a, is a large album. Okay, so with all that, I need to make sure, yeah, this is the inside because I see I've got those little overlays. They're not going to show up much, but I don't want them to be on the outside. I'm ready to put my hinge in. So the reason I like to separate these and fold them left and right is because then you can actually use the corner of your hinge in against the spine to help you get this centered, okay? So once you lift it up, you should have a half inch between um, the spine, the edge of the spine and your first page, okay? So, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add tape to the back of this. Now remember that this uh, part of your project even though it's very tedious, not very glamorous, this is what's holding your book together. So it's not a place to skimp on adhesive. That's also why I leave these wings on and pull them into the front cover and the back cover because it just further anchors the, um, the pages to the book instead of just the hinge area. So I'm gonna cover this whole thing with tape and I'm just gonna speed things up and I'll be right back when, when I'm done. Okay, make sure you burnish everything. It's really important that uh, you don't pull your tape back up as you're installing it. Okay, the 
this is what I like to do. I like to take off one or two strips in the middle, get it adjusted, and then reach under with my pick tool to pull off the rest of the tape. Some people remove all the tape and just hold it and then let it all go at once. I find that if I do make a mistake, it's a lot easier to lift up two pieces of tape, two strips of tape than it is this whole panel. because I want it to go up a little higher. You see the corners are lining right up with my um, spine, which is what I want to see. Okay, now I've got it anchored. Pretty happy with that. Now I can go in with my with my tool and remove the tape on the rest of it. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to burnish that all down. As soon as I figure out what I did with my bone folder. Okay, now the next thing you're going to want to do is come back through and uh, make your score line where the book comes together. Just gently push. It doesn't need to go much beyond that because basically it's designed to open, uh, not close over itself. So hopefully you got your spine in straight, but if you didn't, there is an opportunity to straighten things out one more time. It's when you actually put your pocket page in. So when you put your pocket page in, you're gonna slip it over your hinge, and then you're gonna lay it down and push toward the spine, and you're gonna look for an even border, top to bottom. If you don't, it's hard to see black on black. If you don't see an even border, Tweak it slightly up or down until you start to see a straight line. And that's the other way that you can straighten it, even if it goes down on this peak, slightly crooked. But if it looks right, and you do, definitely don't want this happening where your page is drifting above the covers, which are protecting them. Okay, so then you would add your four pages, which we're not gonna do because it makes sense to leave these out of the book until you get them decorated. Otherwise, you wind up wearing out your book opening and closing it um, before you've even finished your pages. So that's pretty much it. So again, this is eight and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. This is two and a half by eight and a quarter. Okay, and those um, dimensions are in the description. Click the show more and you'll have the, the dimensions for this album, uh, for the cardstock and the chipboard that you need to make this album. Okay, be back in a shortly.